Hello, I am Wynn Holzapfel and I am talking on behalf of VFX, freevfx.net. Now today we're going to be doing a tutorial regarding sky replacement using only free software. So this should be very fun. Now what I'm looking at the moment is I'm looking at the before and after of what we're going to be doing today. So basically, afterwards we have a nice sky and we've color corrected our footage but before we've got a blown out sky and our footage isn't quite matching what we kinda want it to be and what feel we wanted for the scene. So we might just get started. Here's a little preview of what you might expect to see with a few added extras but anyway file new I'm gonna open a new file now the program I'm using today is blender hopefully you've heard of it if you haven't heard of it um, then I'd suggest you look at a few tutorials before attempting this one because this may be a bit on the higher side of intermediate okay so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump straight into the compositor so up here on we're going to click on the little layout icon and then click on compositing after that we're going to start with our composite by clicking use nodes and backdrop I'm then going to right click this render layers node and I'm going to delete it by hitting the delete key I'm then going to shift A add an input movie clip and I'm going to open the movie clip that I wish to add. Now you can click up here to have a look at your thumbnails for all the footage that you have. I'm going to choose my clip, click open, and then I am going to attach that to my composite. And I'm going to shift A, add a viewer, output viewer and link it. Now a little tip when you're compositing, you can shift click the another node and hit F to link them and that should help to speed up your compositing when you need it. So anyway we've got our footage already being channeled through. Now the first thing we're going to do in our sky replacement is we're going to actually key out this white sky. So what I'm gonna, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to just shift A, add a color, oh sorry, matte luminance key node, attach that right back to my viewer and I'm going to switch the mat to be the image output on my viewer and I'm just going to up the low value until only our sky is white so white is what we want included as our sky which we will replace okay so that's looking pretty solid now these clouds here I'm going to leave them there because they're going to help to integrate this scene into the old one okay shift A I'm going to add a filter blur switch the type to fast gaussian and I'm going to insert it before my viewer now it's always nice to stick in um, oh sorry put that matte okay it's always nice to stick in maybe a 32 radius blur so that just helps to integrate the horizon with the actual sky a little bit better so the next thing is to actually key our footage around so to do that I'm going to shift A add a color mix node and I'm not going to connect it there I'm going to connect the blur image to the factor input on the mix node I'm going to connect the movie clip image to the image input I'm also going to connect the output to the image output and I'm going to change the color to black for the secondary. Now this will just have let us have a look at what sort of key we'll be expecting from this composite. Okay, so the next thing to do is to actually track our footage so we can add the sky in. To do that, just click up here, switch to motion tracking, which is another scene type, and then choose our clip. Once we've got our clip, we can begin to add markers, but first we want to go down here and expand tracking settings. Switch our preset to blurry footage, which is what I'm looking at here. Um, and we can also go down a bit further, change our solve type to tripod motion. Okay, we're ready to start our tracking. So just control click on the scene. 
to add some markers. Now a good place to add them is always in the contrasty portions of the clip. So I'm going to add one there, perhaps one all the way over here, and maybe I might put one in here. Okay, so I'm going to hit A and A again to select all of them. Scroll up a bit and then hit track forward. Now three markers have tracked um, quite flawlessly and that's really all we need for this scene to actually have it work as a tripod motion solve. So we can just right click this track here and then hit delete and enter to delete it. So now that we've got our track set down we can hit camera motion under solve to solve our camera. Now we'll see our solved error is at 0 0.2975. Now that's actually not a bad ratio. If anything, anything that's under 0.5 really is all right for basic sky replacement. Preferably you want your value to be under 0 0.2 or 0 0.3. Okay, so the next step is to go back into the 3D view and start to add in your sky. Oh, sorry, back to the motion tracking, sorry. And um, scroll down and cl click set as background under clip and then set up tracking scene. Switch to default, which is our 3D view. Now what we want to do in the 3D view is we want to delete the basic cube and the plane. So we'll just shift right click plane, hit delete, and then enter. Now what we want to do is we want to reset the camera so it's situated in the middle of the screen, which is where we want it. So we'll hit N to open up our transform toolbar, scroll to the very top, right click our camera, and then select the location just by clicking on it, type in zero, press tab, 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 type in zero, hit enter. Now our camera is now oriented right down, which is where we want it. So next thing we will do is we will um, prepare the camera to be our nice little host for our little sky replacement. So in the buttons toolbar, we're going to switch to the camera button and we're going to hit orthographic. Now this should all be fine. Hit zero on your number pad to switch to the camera view. We can now begin to add our actual plane which will be our image. So hit shift A, mesh, plane. Actually you might hit zero again to get out of camera view. Press and hold on this blue marker and pull the plane down a little bit. Now hit zero again to go back to the camera and you can hit G to move around your plane and hit S to scale it. I can then hit S and then X to scale it among the X axes, that's just by moving the mouse. S and Y to scale it among the Y axes. Once I'm happy with that, I can click Z hit Z to send me to wireframes mode. Um, I can go to my materials click new, name it sky mat, change the shading type to shadeless because we don't want to do any 3D stuff at the moment, 3D I should say. Now we're going to switch to the texture panel, we're going to add a new texture, I'm going to call it sky, it's always good to name things in Blender, otherwise you might get a bit lost. Under type we're going to select image or movie. We are now going to open our image which we want to be the sky. Now all of these images I actually got from cgtextures.com which is a very, very fantastic website for this sort of thing and I recommend you check it out. So I'll open that image and that is ready to go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my compositor just by clicking up here and then clicking compositing. I'm going to shift A, add, and input render layers node. I'm going to set the type, set the um, set the layer to background. 
I am going to change the resolution over in the render settings to 100% and I'm going to collect the, connect the image of the render layer to the image of my mix node. I'm then going to hit F12 to render. Okay, our sky is in there and it's tracking to the scene already. Next step is to just check this little checkbox down here to click auto render and then what we can do is we can start positioning our sky in this little 3D view here and it will move around as we position it. So I'm just gonna move the sky around till I feel happy with where it is. So I'm just pressing G to move it around and moving the mouse and I'm pressing S when I want to scale it. Now this image is rather high resolution so I can scale it rather safely. Okay, I'm happy with that positioning so we can just scrub through and see how the image is being tracked and then hit F12 and it will snap to where it's supposed to be. So that's all working very well. Okay, so the next step is colour correcting our footage, which is always a fun bit to do at the end. It's not entirely necessary if you wish to colour correct your footage later, but I'm going to do it now just to show you something a little bit different. So I'm going to hit Shift A once again, add a colour RGB curves node, put it in there, and just start dropping the brightness a little bit to match the um, the sky scenery. And then I'm going to, in my blue channel, I'm going to drop that a little bit, make it a little bit less blue and a bit of more contrast to the sky above it. You can either add in a bit more green or subtract it. I'm going to leave it about, about neutral. And in the red channel, I'm going to add a little bit. Okay. Now the last step in this tutorial, it's almost coming to an end, is to add the sharpness. Now when you're correcting DSLR footage, which is what this is, it's always nice to add a little bit of sharpness in this step because then that saves you having to work on it later. So I'll just add Shift A, Color, oh sorry, Filter, Filter, put it in there, change the type to Sharpen, and then change the factor to 0 0.1. That'll just sharpen our footage a little bit and give it a bit more oomph. Now the next thing we can do is we can do the final section of our actual process which is rendering our footage. Now the to render our footage we want to make sure that our output is set to where we want it to be. So we can just hit this little file icon and select a place we want it to be. Now say I want it to be on my desktop I can just click accept and then what I can do is I can select my container. I find H.264 to be a nice one. And I can go down to encoding, change my format to QuickTime, and everything else should be fine. I'll change this to MB3. And after I've done that, I can simply hit animation to render my sequence. And that's it for another tutorial for freevfx.net. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email or put a comment on the site because I moderate it quite frequently. And thank you very much for listening.